Billy Poulton and uh, just give a little bit of a background to his work. And then we'll talk a little bit about the volume itself and then we'll come back to a discussion of the play and then we'll move on to the next play uh, excerpt and so on through the night. So first of all, just to introduce uh, uh, Cody. Cody's Professor of Japanese Literature and Theatre in the Department of Pacific and Asian Studies at the University of Victoria in Canada. And uh, he's a specialist in modern Japanese theatre and also a translator of uh, many Japanese plays. Um, and uh, he's the author of Scripts of Another Sort, the plays of Izumi Kyoka and A Beggar's Art, Scripting Modernity in Japan, 1900 to 1930. He's also worked on a number of other edited volumes, uh, including uh, uh, alongside this one. Uh, he's been a very busy scholar over the years, I think. And uh, uh, so it's a it's very great pleasure to welcome you here tonight, Cody. Well, um, thank you very much pleasure. for coming. Um, uh, also, just to give you a little bit of background on the uh, work of Aya Ogawa, who's directed the excerpts tonight. Uh, she might be known to most of you in New York. She's born in Tokyo, raised in Georgia, Texas, and California, and is now based in Brooklyn. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Theatre Arts from Columbia University, and she's a writer, performer, director, translator uh, in theatre, and she's translated many Japanese plays, including um, uh, one of the plays that is in the volume, uh, Okada Toshiki's Five Days in March, and that will also be the final excerpt that we'll hear tonight, an excerpt from that play, a uh, very superb translation, actually, that she did. Um, so just to begin our discussion tonight, um, just a little bit uh, about this uh, book here, a modern, um, the Columbia Anthology of Modern Japanese Drama. Uh, basically, it, it covers about 100 years of uh, Japanese theatre from the early 20th century right through until the early 21st century. Yep. And um, you're one of three editors who worked on this project over a number of years. So um, I guess we could just begin by saying, you know, um, why did you do this book? Why did you get involved in this project? And, and what do you think that is uh, uh, compelling about the book? And, and what were some of the challenges that you faced in, in uh, editing this book? Yeah. Um, well, uh, Columbia University Press has come out with a long series of, of excellent uh, anthologies of Japanese literature over the years. Um, uh, one, of, uh, one of the editors is here tonight, uh, Haruo Shirane, who's uh, worked on uh, pre-modern uh, uh, Japanese literature and is a professor at Columbia University. Um, now, uh, some years ago, uh, this is quite a few years ago, probably a good 20 years ago, uh, Columbia came out with a, an anthology of uh, traditional Japanese theater, uh, which included all the sort of major genres, no bundaku, kabuki, and so on, uh, edited by Karen Brazell. Uh, it's a wonderful book, and I use it uh, myself all the time when I'm teaching pre-modern Japanese theater. Uh, but there was never uh, a companion volume uh, to that for modern Japanese theater or drama. Um, and there hasn't been. Um, uh, really, there have been other uh, anthologies of different kinds, but nothing in one volume that, that, that uh, students or other people could uh, go to. Uh, so uh, this was really a very timely book. Um, I got uh, involved uh, through the back door, as it were, because uh, Tom Reimer and Mitsuya Mori were already talking uh, about putting together this book, and uh, Tom asked me to sort of um, uh, get on the bandwagon, and so I did. But it's uh, it's been about a decade uh, since uh, since we first talked about putting this book together, so I'm really happy to see it out now. I guess one of the interesting things about this book is that. Uh, it brings together, I think, people who have composite skills. Most of us who work on modern or contemporary Japanese theatre tend to focus on a particular genre or field or era. Um, mm -hmm. My own work, for example, is largely post-1960s. And uh, what's extraordinary about this book is that I think it covers so many diverse periods of, of, of the modern and has, is a, really quite a representational, uh, an attempt to represent a field of modern drama across 100 years. Mm -hmm. How have you organized the book and, and, and thought about that? Um, it's, it's in six sections. Uh, there's an introduction um, written by uh, Mitsuya Mori, who's uh, uh, the leading authority in Japan on Ibsen, as a matter of fact. And uh, 
He uh, reads and speaks Norwegian and, and has translated uh, all of Ibsen's plays and directed them uh, on the Tokyo stage. Um, he wrote an introduction um, and, and uh, was, of course, a co-editor, so he did uh, his, his, his share of the work for the, the other sections as well. Um, the first, um, the very first section is, is really setting up the stage, as it were, for modern drama in Japan, uh, which doesn't really begin until uh, the first productions of, of, of Ibsen uh, in the first decade of the 20th century. Um, so in a way, modern Japanese drama uh, starts after that period, in the very late Meiji period, uh, sort of in the late, uh, say, 1910, uh, through uh, 1920 uh, is the period uh, when uh, Japanese playwrights start to write uh, plays of various kinds. Ibsen wasn't, of course, the only uh, uh, influence. Um, I, uh, my own work has jumped around a lot, and uh, I uh, published a book a couple of years ago, uh, which is an anthology as well as a kind of a history of early Japanese drama. And I looked at this period from the late 19th uh, to the 1920s, 1930s, uh, really, uh, which was a cardinal turning point uh, in uh, the creation of modern theater and drama in Japan, as well as a lot of other modern things. Um, there are other sections which are roughly uh, laid out historically, um, five sections uh, that uh, start from the early 20th century and, and move into the, um, into the 21st. Uh, and there's a final section on popular drama. Um, three genres are represented there. Uh, Shimpo, which is kind of a transitional form um, from the early 20th century. Kabuki, uh, which uh, is still being written. Um, there's uh, a play by uh, Mishima, uh, Yukio Mishima, which is a kabuki play in that section. And uh, there's an excerpt of, of uh, one of the sort of most important uh, works of the Takarazuka the Theater, musical theater, all women's theater. Um, this is the Rose of Versailles, uh, which is set in uh, revolutionary France. Um, so uh, it really tries to cover um, different genres and certainly this whole span of modern Japanese theater. You're really covering, uh, I guess, a kind of realist theater uh, right through to absurdist and avant-garde theatre traditions. Mm -hmm. But you've also included, I think, a, a, a sprinkling of women playwrights from across yes. the decades and, yep. uh, and also some very contemporary um, work that uh, is, you know, of the moment, I think. Um, we aim for variety, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just turn now then to a discussion of the first uh, section that we heard, the first excerpt from... Mm -hmm the play Living With Father. This is a play written in 1994, so yes. it's uh, quite a contemporary play, and it's written by somebody who's uh, a very popular playwright in Japan. Is that, yes. that's, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, Hisashi Inoue. Uh, he just died a couple of years ago, um, but uh, he was at the top of his game. He had been very active uh, both as a playwright and a novelist uh, since the 1960s. Um, his work is uh, the closest to kind of uh, commercial theater of the sort of art forms, uh, art drama forms that uh, are in the book. Um, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he was influenced by Bertolt Brecht, and I think we'll see some uh, influence of Brecht and Okada's work as well. Mm. Um, but uh, he uh, aimed to be popular, uh, and yet uh, his work is a kind of a critical engagement with uh, Japanese history in various forms. Um, uh, a lot of his works are kind of tragic comedies, um, and many of them are musicals as well. We heard uh, tonight, I think, a, a, a kind of meditation on history. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, I think a, a play with a very so strong sense of residual trauma um, yeah. with, within, uh, I guess, the Japanese condition in, in the post-war period. Is that something that he's concentrated on in his work uh, across a range of plays? Or is Very it much, I think, is it's particularly modern history. Um, one of his last works uh, called uh, Massacre Rhapsody uh, is a musical uh, drama uh, on the uh, 
the life and uh, death uh, through police torture of the uh, communist writer um, Kobayashi Takiji, uh, who I think was murdered by um, uh, secret police uh, in uh, 1930, uh, around that time. Um, so he, 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 uh, his, his, his subject certainly is modern Japanese history, and uh, mm. he's very, um, he was, uh, he was a communist himself, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. and he writes for a, a very modern theater. It's a, it's a kind of realist tradition, I think, that he's, is, he's writing for. That, think he comes out of the Shingeki, a so-called new drama uh, background. So it's, it's, it's basically a kind of a realist theater, um, and it's uh, the closest of the three works that we're looking at. Uh, that are sort of uh, straight realist drama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we've met, he's also a very prolific playwright. I think of, of, of the three playwrights we're looking at, he, he may well be the most prolific, although Okada's uh, still very young and he's got a long career ahead of him, I suspect, as a playwright. Yeah. But, um, yeah. You know, the Japanese, if anything, are uh, certainly prolific in, in many of the different genres that we look at. Uh, these playwrights uh, typically um, uh, crank out a play or two a year, um, and over the course of a long career, you think of somebody like Betsy Akuminoru, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the absurdist playwright who's not featured tonight. Um, he's written well over 100 plays. Yeah, um, yeah they really do crank them out, and they, they often... <laughs> yeah. And, and, not all of them are good, but we tried to pick the best ones, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you pick the best ones here. Yeah. Um, so we'll um, take our seats again, I think. Sure. We'll um, hear and the second excerpt, which is uh, a play called The Attic by Sakate Yoji. Um, 